So let's just remind you then the way the semi-finals now look. There's confirmation of England going through their semi-final. 11-7 against Wales. Still to come, of course, Ireland against Australia. Remember, Ireland never have won this title. Australia won it uh, four years ago. <laughs> Hello and a warm welcome to the Hilton Hotel in Blackpool for the World 8-Ball Pool Championships. We're in the teams competition at the moment and we're down to the semi-final stages. We've already had one semi-final. That saw the champions England going through over previous champions Wales 11-7. Coming up, it's Ireland up against Australia. Both these sides really revved up for this semi-final confrontation. How close is it? Well, in the round-robin stages, that's what they go through to get through to the semi-finals. The top three ended up with 16 points apiece. That's how close it is. Joining me to enjoy this, once again, the captain of the uh, South African side, that's Mikey Alexandro. And Mikey, you guys almost made it to the semi-finals yourself. Yeah, very close content, uh, competitiveness we've had with Ireland and Wales. Very close games. We beat them 12-9. bit unfortunate. We lost to Scotland 15-6. Uh, we got a bit of a hardy against them. But other than that, yeah, very close. I think next year we'll definitely have a chance to qualify for the semi-finals. Our dream to get there. Um, I guess when it comes to the break, you need a bit of luck for a, a, a pot off the break. And I guess your skill to finish the game off. And that's what the Australia seem to be able to do very well. They're a good managing side over their particular table. But I think Ireland will give them a good go, being so spirited. But Greg Fan letting go a little bit of his cue, Tony Holgate holding the side together, but I think Australia will definitely get it. Well, hard luck for your guys not getting through, but I'm sure we'll be back next year, and they just said they will be, so that's good. Coming a long way from South Africa, but let's take a look at our teams today. Australia, of course, have come a long way, but they've got a very strong side, including the world champion in Quinton Hahn. But Greg Ferran, also of Ireland, has been a previous world champion. Tony Holgate, the captain, very revved up for this. Who else would you mention in, out of these two teams, Mikey? Well, let's put it this way. Mark Williams uh, finished in the top eight of the individuals, um, per personally. Uh, Quentin Hunt finished very high as well. Sean Budd did very well too. Um, Tony Holgate, I think, was the only player that actually did very well. It's all about team that we're in this, isn't it? You've really got to get together with your team. All of these players are good. They can all win a frame or two, but it's about under the pressure, under the crowds, because it's going to be a good atmosphere, I would have thought. Yeah, for sure. Well, Australia being world champions before, Ireland being world champions before, so they both know what's, what they need to... Uh, present out there, so it'll be a close content, uh, competitive competition. All right, well, England are already through. Uh, they were winners of this. Now, who's going to try and knock them off their perch? Is it going to be Ireland or Australia? Let's get down to the action. The atmosphere is good outside. I can hear it right behind me. And, of course, for this one, we've got Keith Brewer and Neil Blake joining Jim White to pick up the commentary. Yes, who is going to be facing England in the final? Alec Evernatis, the captain of the Australian side, breaking off here. Frame number one of a schedule 21. It's the first team to 11 will be hoisting, or at least a chance to hoist the trophy, but they'll still have to go through England. The road, the path to victory, goes right through the holders. And a good break off from Alec early on. Red down, that's the first order of business. It gives him a chance to choose the discipline, and that's always a big advantage, certainly at this level. And I've got a couple gentlemen joining me here in the com box, and uh, they were heel and toe to each other last night. Yellow Bulls nominate. Certainly, uh, gentlemen, a uh, little easier, a little more subdued in the com box, but uh, Keith, I know that you were happy Yellow to take out nominate. Wales. Wales is always a good side, a defending world championship team. Any preferences as to who you might be looking to play here? Well, it's, it's, it's quite surprising, actually, because we've got these two teams in the semi-final, and these are the two teams that beat England in the, in the, in the group stages, the round-robin stage coming through. Um, I don't think there's any preference, really, that uh, the, both, both the teams are very strong. But a few of them are predicting a very, very one-sided battle. I know that uh, 30 seconds. the gentleman from South Africa, Mikey Ale Alexandru, in the in the studio there, said that he fancied Australia heavily. Neil, do you share those thoughts? No, not really. I think the team spirit with the Ireland team will bring them through. I think it could be a very close match. Well, I can tell you that when these two sides met earlier on in the round-robin stages, a comprehensive victory for Ireland, 14-7 over Australia. 
But Keith, you and I were talking. One more look. Alec looks like he's in very good form early on. And this is very important, isn't it, to set the stage. And what better way than to have your captain lead off with a victory? Well, I think, you know, we've both seen the flat settle down as quickly as possible. And, and the first frame is probably that important for both sides because, obviously, uh, I remember when we, when we played the... Uh, Wales, I think we went 3-0 up, and of course by then the team was totally relaxed, and we kind of never looked back really from there. So we, yeah, the start of the game is going to be uh, vitally important for both sides. I think it's more important for Ireland because they're a very noisy side, and if they get off to a good start, they'll start singing and getting on the other team's backs, and before you know it, Australia could have a big problem. Well, that's John Collum there. Just trying to gain control of that bottom left corner, and it looks like he's accomplished that. But yes, we've seen how boisterous the Irish side can be in the past. They've never won this title, but they were the beaten finalists last year by England. <coughs> they always send a very capable side to try and lift this crown. You can see very early Alec taking that red out of there. And right now, Australia looks to be in command in this opening frame. <coughs> and you see a very new side there for Australia. Another interesting point that when Australia took the title in 1997, Alec Evernatis, the man at the table, is the only remaining player from that winning side. Over the last few years, um, <laughs> the Australian side have always come back and said they'd left players at home, players that they should have had there and maybe this year they brought them all. I think they feel that their side this year is easily the strongest they've ever fielded. They've got world champion Quinton Hahn this time playing for the Aussie side and a couple other players that come to note, Sean Budd, Ricky Flood. There's Quinton Hahn, the defending <laughs> Embassy <laughs> World <laughs> Singles champion. Australia Quentin Hahn actually Australia. will be the next player up following Alec here. Australia are very confident coming into the semi-finals. Uh, quite a few of them said, oh yeah, we're going to win this. Tony Holgate, he's a main fixture on that Irish side. He actually will be opposing Quentin Hahn in the second session. So it'll be both those players' second frames and they'll be locking horns. And Holgate does tend to let the crowd live on the edge of their seat. He's the leading singer, I think. Nice. <coughs> Greg Farron beside Tony on the left there, another former Embassy World Champion. And you know, Keith, when Australia lifted that crown in 97, one of the few times that England has tasted defeat in this very tournament. 14-12, the eventual score line there. It was close, but seconds. England got second place on that occasion. Well, I remember that quite well, actually, John. I think it was the first time that England had been beaten in the team event um, that year. It was the first time we failed to win it. We've got quite a good record, actually, in the event. Um, the only two teams we've lost to are Wales and Australia, and of course we've, we've, we've beaten Wales in the semi-final this year. And um, of course that memorable match that we had with Ireland in the final last year, well it would take some living up to to have another game like that, I think. Well, another foul. point of interest that... Oh, there's a foul! Oh, Alec Evanatis must not have contacted a cushion there, Keith, and that's, uh, that's a tremendous let-off. Another look at it. The yellow certainly didn't get to a cushion, and obviously no other ball did. And again, with these eight ball rules here, after contacting the object ball, some ball has to touch a cushion. And if it doesn't, it's a foul and two visits to the incoming player, such as John Cullum is going to enjoy here. Well, that's pretty careless by the Australian captain there. He was obviously just uh, trying to play it dead weight, so if it just if it didn't pop in, it would just be sat over the pocket, but uh, a little bit careless not to have the cue ball touching the cushion. And you can see it's very, very clear too to both these sides with the players that they're fielding early on. 
They really do want to get off the mark. Good steady pot, that one from John Collum. And you have to feel that given the second visit still in hand, got to be got to be big favorite here, Neil. Yeah, I can see some singing coming along. The Bami Army will be on the roll. Yes, uh, the playing order, the Irish manager there. Always send a very strong side. Some new blood in the Irish side this year, I've seen. Last year they had uh, Tom Kinsella, he's not here this year. Uh, I think Paddy O'Leary's a new, a new player for their team. This is a good result, this, for Ireland. Alec Evernatis is one of the mainstays for the Aussie side. And to take him out early. Going to give the Irish side a boost of confidence, and there you go. This is what we'll be looking for. They'll be building on emotion. Ireland 1, Australia 0. And high fives all around. And this was the mistake from Alec Evernatis. Just trying to get that yellow over the corner pocket, but so unlucky. A couple balls very close to touching a cushion, but in the end, nothing did. And that eventually proved his undoing. Yeah, you've got to make sure you hit a cushion or it's killer time. You have big problems. And the reaction again from the Irish side. And now, uh, the Australian roadblock in Second the form Brian, of Quinton Hahn um, to try and level the ship. He'll be up against Robert Brady. Again, a familiar face for Team Ireland. But Quinton Hahn was very high in the individual rankings, boasting a 16-10 record, and that translated into a 61, just over 61% winning average. Interesting enough, the gentleman at the table actually won one more frame than Quinton in the singles, Robert Brady, that Quinton is going to be up against here. Well, these yellows have split beautiful off the break. Come on, yellow balls in play. And the way Quinton's been playing this week, Jim, he's got a fancy him to finish the game right now. He has been awesome this week, really has. That's right, his white control has been absolutely superb and uh, he just makes these finishes look so easy. Uh, what I find fascinating even about the way Quinton has played here is that he's playing with a brand new cue. He ran into some cue problems during this tournament and uh, went to a local club, grabbed a cue off the rack, fixed it up and that's what he's using. Amazing talent. And that one never looked out. So is the talent for finding a great cue in a little club mm -hmm. or, or actually playing with it? I think he could put a tip on just about the back end of anything. Maybe the back end of that cue and still play pretty well. Still got that one problem yellow, just to the right of the black. Just in the cluster here, that looks like it could still be a bit of a problem, that yellow. It may be available bottom right. Yeah, he wants to finish low on it, I would think. Probably after this shot. Oh no. He's nice. Yeah. That's perfect. Absolutely perfect. Nice angle on the penultimate yellow to stun over for the one that was 
always look to be the awkward one, the last remaining. And look at that. As I say, fantastic white control. It's everything so much easier. And very quickly, Australia level. A great innings from Quinton Hahn there. 1 1 in the best of 21 semi final. Final stages, it's Australia against Ireland. Both these sides want to go through to that final to meet the champions, England. Tony Holgate is up next, the basher. Let's get back to our commentary team. Well, this is one certainly that we've been looking forward to. Tony Holgate, Irish captain, out there against Mark Williams. And Mark Williams just happens to lead the tables for Australia. 21 wins to only 9 losses, a 70% winning percentage there and lots of experience behind Mark Williams. It's not a bad split there for Tony. Just got one problem ball which he should be able to sort out one time or another. That'll be the red over on the right hand side of the table as we look. And the yellows are blocking its way down to the corner. He may be able to get on it into the middle. But other than that, it's uh, it's a tough little ball. And Tony Holgate actually leading the way for the Irish team. 63% winning percentage. Jesus. Come on, Come on, Come on, Come on. That was a long way out. Well, I was just going to say to Neil is that I can't believe how far he's missed that by, Neil. That's right, that's right. He's only, he's only just caught the edge of the knuckle, which is uh, pretty bad. And all of a sudden, from a, a situation where you think he was probably going to clear the table, now all of a sudden, Mark's got a great chance to win the frame. That's right, and he's a good player, you know, the oldest Aussie team. Come on, come well, with a name like that, Neil, we expect him to be a good player, don't we? Well, he's not quite from Abbeville, but... <laughs> <laughs> but he'd be a useful player on the Welsh side with a name like Williams. Yeah, I, I, I'd quite li like to get Mark Williams playing for our Welsh side. That would be something, wouldn't it? <laughs> Matthew Stevenson, too bad either. Come on then, Tony. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. Come on, Tony. No choice, really. A bad positional shot off his first yellow. That's right. I, I've played on this table, and it slips a fair bit, especially when you're playing your first shots on it. You you don't actually realise how much it's going to slip till you play it. It comes off the cushion and just, like, slides away from you. Well, Mark had settled for a safety here, and um, he's put the yellow over the bottom right-hand pocket as we look, because obviously it's protecting the black and the the bad red, so to speak. But uh, from Tony's point of view, he's back at the table, and he's just started off from where he left off, so he's got the one bad red to sort out, and uh, somewhere along the line, he's got to try and find an angle to get in there. Two-time Embassy World Singles Champion Rob McKenna, a teammate of yours, Neil. Enjoying the action here. That's right, he's an avid viewer. You never stop being a student of the game, do you? No, no. Well, I think he may have had a result here. Um, whether this red will go down the side of the cushion and past the yellow. That's right, right, and you could get the, the black control then and everything. Didn't play it well though. No. He was a long way away with the cue ball, although he kind of de tried to develop everything. He was a right up the other end of the table and he didn't play that shot particularly well. Vicky Layton, Tony's girlfriend on the right hand side there. And, and a friend with a silly hat. They don't, they're not without their supporters, are they? The Irish team, every year. Now, Mark doesn't really have to go for the, the finish from this situation. Uh, he's got complete control of the frame at the moment, with the red being down near the bottom right-hand pocket. So it's just important to play the right shots here. Had a bit of a lucky kiss there. Yeah. That's a pretty good result, though, Neil. That's right. <coughs> yes, the pace actually key on this shot perfect right over the bottom corner pocket and now complete control of the bottom of the table 
Yes, but there is enough room for this red to go past the yellow, and he could kick the yellow away and still be favourites. The red will be on the pocket, you just got to watch where the black's going to go. This has to be seconds. perfect. Absolutely. Come on, Mark. Uh, nothing's changed. No, that shot could have been a very important shot, but now he's left in a, a bad position. Had very little room for error there. That's right. Tony Holgate, a former runner-up in the Embassy World title. Back in 1996. To his countryman, Greg Farron. What a team Ireland put together that particular year. Well, he's elected to go for this. Not that's the wrong thing to do, but he's felt a little bit awkward here. Shot, that's a good shot. Played for the double kiss. Very good shot there. Maintains a very good position, and now just one key shot to go. That's right, he's got... If he's going to screw back between the gap, it's quite hard. But he's played it nice. He's played it nice, as long as he gets away from this middle. Good steady shot, this one from Mark. The only danger was the in-off into the centre, and once he dodged that bullet... Williams, the team leader for Australia. 3 1. He's now set them in flight. These people called Mark Williams. They just can't stop winning. Sixth frame. Ireland to break. Trailing three frame two. And now we're looking at Paddy Dorn from Ireland up against Travis Crawley, one of the really good players from Australia. Good break off there from Patty. <laughs> Red balls in five. Well, it's a good break in this frame and taking the Reds. Both sets have come out pretty good, I suppose, but. It's always a little bit easier when you've got all the object balls in one little area of the table. And as you can see, all the reds are kind of down at the bottom. So by eliminating these two in the middle, he can kind of just move the cue ball down there and it should be pretty easy for him. <coughs> he's lost control a bit there. Well, it's not ideal, Neil, but he's actually landed on a red into the top pocket. And if he gets this, he's going to be right in the middle of the three reds. That's right. <laughs> and the yellows still are, are in good positions as well. Not quite as good as the reds, but they're still there to be potted. He's had a result where the reds finished, though, because uh, there is a yellow up the top end of the table, and of course he's blocked it to the obvious pocket. I uh, missed that one. Travis Crawley, one of the <laughs> bright young stars on the Australian pool playing Horizon. Paddy Dorn slotting that red into the top corner pocket. That can make a big difference, that shot. Well, that should have just won him the frame. Want to be a little further up on this one. <coughs> if this is straight, it'd be easy. Um, now he's got a lot of travelling to do with the white ball. <coughs> he's doing a little travelling himself. Now, 
should have a nice a nice black. Very nice control. Time running. This eight to level the scores at three apiece. No problems whatsoever for Patty Doran and Ireland, true to form, fighting their way back into this one. Now three frames apiece in this race to 11. They know they're back in the match now. Seven frame, Australia to break, three frames all. Sean Budd for Australia breaking off here. Good pal of Quentin's. Always see him in the bar together, going to the tournaments together. Well, I think Sean actually uh, had a go at the professional snooker scene a few years back. I recognize his name, and so you know he's going to have a very sound technique. Very close to be being able to pot that difficult red that the cue ball has finished nearest. It almost looks like you can get through to it, but obviously a few other options preferred. Thirty seconds. Yeah. Right. What a pot that is. That's a huge pot, isn't it? That's right, that takes very good cueing. Getting that arm up in the air and keeping your arm going straight through the ball. It's fantastic. Well, once again, he could get through to that red between the black and the yellow to the center pocket. He's got an easier one bottom right. He may end up having to play that, that red off the yellow. I think, uh, <laughs> well, not after that shot. As well as he's been potting, he just couldn't get that cue ball into the area that he really wanted. <coughs> well, really, I think in that situation, he'd been better off just putting the ball over the pocket. He would have left uh, no shot on the yellows. And he could have just sat back waiting for his next turn. That's right. Whereas here, I feel, uh, looking at the, f the five yellows that are remaining... 30 seconds. He's just going to make it easy for Greg to finish the game. Yeah, he's lost control a bit there. Yes, we haven't had a look yet at Greg Farron. <laughs> Good contact, but Greg Farron, the back end for Team Ireland. And he will be depended on very heavily. A former Embassy World Champion and one of the masters of this game of eight ball pool. Keith would know he's got a very sound technique on these tactics. He's played an indifferent shot there. He's tried to cover the, the pocket and also try and bring the cue ball in behind this these yellows down to the left hand side and he doesn't seem to have achieved any of it. No, I'm not sure if he can get through to this red. Come on. Looks very close. Well, I'll tell you what, I've got to think he can see that. Certainly if that camera is, gives us any indication. That's right, with a smaller white it can be deceptive. That, that could go. That could go. It doesn't look like he's looking at it. This is a chance now for Farron. This battle of the left-handers. <coughs> 
seven players comprise each team with the eighth being the reserve that can be called in at the manager's discretion to take the place of whichever player he may feel is struggling. That's the manager nearest the camera here. and Greg Farron is the seventh player to go out for the Irish side. As I said earlier, he's the, the anchor man. He'll always take the right option, Greg. He uh, takes his time, makes sure he plays the right shot. Well, he's just dislodged that red. I think that eight will be available bottom right now, and that's all Greg wanted to do. This should be straightforward, Keith. Yeah, although he's not the red on top of the black, it does pass to the bottom right-hand pocket, as we can see. So, uh, yeah, there's no real problems here. Now the yellow in the center, and leaving that one where he can just stop the cue ball right there to leave the eight bottom right. He'll still take his time, even though it's an absolute certainty exactly what he's doing. That's Greg Farron for you. Overhit that a touch. Still should be able to just drop it in. But well, considering the three balls he had, and how easy they were, really there's not much excuse to leave it like this, is there? That's true. <laughs> But uh, he has left an angle that he didn't want. Um, one option he's got is to play it with plenty of left hand side and try and cannon into the red. <coughs> of course, if uh, if you do that, you're never really sure what's going to happen. You could miss the cannon, you could catch it thin, catch it thick. You could you hit know. the black, couldn't you, and knock the black safe. Could could do anything. And um, we've we've seen a, a, a few frames like this in the first session here. This you know this morning this match where um, there's been a couple of, like, you know, small mistakes. Oh, well, great recovery there. He had to kill the pace of the white, loaded up with a lot of bottom and left-hand side here. And the yellow just getting to the pocket. Down goes the eight for the second time in this one. Australia enjoying a one-frame lead. The narrowest of margins, 4-3 in this race to 11 semi-final. Up against Mark Williams. Ninth frame. Robert, a former quarter-finalist of the singles uh, from a few years back. And Mark Williams, one of the leading players of all of them, actually <laughs> made the world team. They have a, a world ranking list here of individual scorings in the teams and Mark Williams finishing joint third. Well, has the worm ever turned here though from 3-1 in front Australia was enjoying a comfortable lead and looked to be in the driver's seat and they seem to have lost the handle of this one. That's right, and in this game they're looking um, not too promising because the Reds are out. There's a finish there for Robert. Red balls in the play. They can take these. Um, Ireland are really in control of this match. I just don't understand the, the attitude of some of the Australian players because um, they've been in with chances in virtually every frame, but they just seem to have gone like a bit headless. They just seem to be attacking when they don't need to attack. Uh, they're going for difficult outs, they're making positional mistakes, and they're just like gift wrapping it to Ireland virtually every frame. Too relaxed for my liking. <coughs> they 
haven't had much to cheer about for the last uh, half an hour or so through this match. Still got to be careful here, though. Even though the Reds are available, we've seen so often that one lax positional shot can prove the difference between winning and losing. That's right. The this, that, you've played that very well, it looks like. This positional shot is um, the game winner, really, in this game. Now, choice of ways to play this red bottom left. I mean, he could actually play the one into the right center, but that would take a brave man. Well, I think what he's got to pay attention to is the actual black ball. And um, if he takes the red in the center last, then obviously he's in the black in the opposite center. So I think probably that would be his best route. So he's played that well. Drop this into the center, and he's got a should have a nice easy black into the middle into the opposite middle well, I don't know this looks dodgy to me guys <coughs> this could have been considerably easier I think he was better placed on that red had he shot it before right. good solid stroke there from Robert Brady one more and Ireland will be 6-3 in front. And John McMahon is as anxious as anybody on the Irish side. He really started the ball off rolling here. Down goes the eight, and Robert Brady is keeping that Irish ball rolling on. 6-3 now ahead of Australia. Well, they got a lot to think about right now. 6-3 behind. Momentum certainly with the Irish. They've come back after the break and just kept the ball rolling. Right, leading six frames three. Well, this is one they have to expect to get. Alec Evernatis, the, the captain, the only remaining player from the World Championship team of a few years ago. And, and Pat as well, his, his first year at the World Championships, I think. Right, well, look at the break. Reds. Massive break. Lovely. Well, it can't do anything if he's sat in that chair. Red balls in play. Yes, this is just again a, an indication they have really been dominant in the breaking department, the Irish side. And the Australian team just hasn't had the measure of the break, and what a weapon. Alec Evernatis might well not get out of his chair. And it's 6-3 behind right now. If Evernatis gets beat, it's going to be a long way back for Australia. Make those seats on that long plane journey just a little bit more uncomfortable. slightly overhit that. You'd like to leave that red on the right hand side bottom of the table as we look till last. Again that would afford the easiest position onto the black. So this really is the big shot here. This red along the right hand cushion. This is the one he has to have. Yeah, also he's got to make sure of his position. If he hits it a little bit too hard, he could be in, all, he could be in a bit of trouble with his next ball. So he's got to just trickle it in, and he'll be in a nice position. Another look at it. Great pot, this one. Keith, you're watching this Irish side, and they look is almost invincible right now. And you being one of the mainstays on the English side, I mean, you're, you're witnessing this here. 
I think you're going to have something to say to your team if Ireland should progress. Yeah, it'll be safe. Don't make the same mistakes that Australia are making. Because although Ireland are playing OK at the moment, I think that the, the key factor in this game is that the mistakes that Australia have made earlier on when they've had chances. He hasn't come perfect on this ball. Looks like he's looking to take the red off the yellow to, just to straighten the shot out. I think he can just roll it in. Roll it in slowly, and the white should finish pretty comfortably on the eight. Yeah. What a blow this would be for Australia. A great shot there, willing that ball into the pocket. Yeah. Paul O'Leary is taking yet another one for Ireland. The Australian captain Alec Evernatis, not even a chance, not a look in. A terrific performance now, 7-3 in front. Now, this is going to be interesting. The world champion in Quinton Hahn up against Tony Holgate. Holgate, desperate to win this match. He believes he should have won a championship before now. He came very close. He'd like nothing better than to have a crack at Quinton Hahn. That face says it all. This one should be fun. Let's join our commentators. Well, he might look forward to this, but right now he's hoping he gets a chance. The reigning world champion up against a former world finalist in Holgate. And it's 7-3 behind. Desperate times for Australia. And what better player to call out than Quentin Hahn. That's right. Australia really need this game. They need to play a good, safety sh um, good positional shot there. I'm not sure if he's played one. That's a, well, that's a beautiful that shot. shot. Even when he gets in trouble, he pulls out these great shots. Another great shot there. Plants are never easy, Jim. You know that from your snooker days. And you know, you're never guaranteed, but he just played it so well. Especially with that much distance between them. Yeah, there's a fair length between the pocket and the red ball as well. You can see where his, uh, the other ball is left. Well, I think that the, the red just below the yellow on the side rail doesn't pot, so he needs to leave an angle, and this is why he's electing seconds. to go this way. Come on, then. That's the first ball I've seen Quentin miss. Yellow ball's in play. <coughs> well, Holgate with a chance. And Quentin not happy with his effort there. But he does have an insurance policy, again, in the same area on the right-hand side there. You can see that yellow wedge between the two reds. And Tony will have to develop that. disgust on his face there. Didn't quite like that shot. <coughs> nice pot here. Only had the outer half of that middle. But they do look confident right now. Six frames in a row. They've erased a 3-1 deficit and turned it into a 7-3 lead. <coughs> it's been some time since the Australian side has seen a frame go their way. Yeah, Tony's got two problem balls at the moment. Got the one wedged in between the two reds. Plus he's got one on this left-hand side cushion. Which he needs to do something with. Let's try to move it then. Good pot here, but he's starting to run out of options. 
I was just going to say that myself, Jim. I mean, we're, watch, we're watching him put all the, all the open yellows, but he's got one that's on the rail. Well, what's he going to do? If there's enough room under the one red, they may be able to play underneath it and then take the yellow off the red into the middle if there's enough room under the red. Thirty seconds. Well, there you can see. Difficult to tell close. from that perspective. Yeah, it looks very close. Uh, right now, it almost appears like he's going to try and catch lightning in a jar. I don't think that shot's on, Neil. The shot you alluded to just a few minutes ago, uh, in off the red into the center with that yellow. Not on, but... What Tony's trying right now, I'm not exactly sure. If he can run the whites into the center of the table, um, round in between the two middles, he may be able to back double the yellow back into the, other, um, the opposite middle. No, he's just tried to kick it out. Come on, Ben. Come on, Ben. Well, that was a mighty flail. Yeah, he just stuck his cue through that one. Not even close. Well, he was asking so much. Thirty seconds. Well, he's still going to bump this red out. It's uh, just below the yellow on the right hand side. So, be interesting to see how Quinton goes around this. He's got to shoot the red over the pocket now. Come up close to the center of the table. This was a good pot from the side cushion. I think he'd like to have landed on that red over the middle. Left the one bottom left as an insurance policy. So he's got to get a nice angle now. That's perfect. Now Cannon in potting this red, bump that other red down towards the corner pocket. These are the kind of shots that De Quinton seems to play so well. He can't, it's controlled cannon that he's going to play. It's a great shot. The tide has been stemmed for the moment. A great performance again, as one would have expected, from the reigning world champion, Quinton Hahn. 7-4 to Ireland. Still, Quentin Hahn can offer a smile. I don't think anybody expected Ireland to be firing on all cylinders like this. And just look who Australia has to face now. Former world champion, Greg Farron. Well, Australia has decided to pull out all stops against Farron here. They've brought in their reserve, Ricky Flood, as we see Farron breaking off again. Not the ideal order of the day. From this point onwards, Australia has got to take all their chances. And that's not the way to do it. Open well, they figured they had nothing to lose, and certainly Flood has not hit a ball yet in this team championship till now. He was the reserve. He's taking the place of Ben Bolton. And there's Ben Bolton right there. Ben lost his opening frame in the first session, and Happy to see Ricky Flood, and you know he's rooting very hard for his countrymen right now. 9-4, Australia trails. Yellow balls in the play. The problem.
problem ball for Farron. Very obvious in the center of the table just below the eight. Look, Keith, like he went after it right away. Wouldn't have been a bad shot if he'd landed on it. No, because that's that's the, that's the way that the game should be played. If, you, if you've got one bad ball in there or one half bad ball, then that's the one you've got to get after straight away. And for me, Australia haven't played like that in this match. They, they seem to have potted all the open balls and then left the difficult ones to last, and you can't do that. At the start of this telecast, I alluded to the fact that both Ireland and Australia had beat England in the round robin stages so regardless of who you face in the final you're going to be looking for a little payback well I'll tell you if, 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 if we do play Ireland in the final if it lifts up to last year's match then it's going to be one hell of a game I can tell you because last year's final was you know speaking to all the players that were here last year and everything that watched it they said it was probably the best team final that they've ever seen Last and, year, uh, Keith, 11-10 England over Ireland, and uh, I know there were a lot of people on the edge of their seats watching that one. <coughs> you know Ireland would dearly love to get back in and have one more shot at you. Still a little work to do, though. Ricky Flood just can't get it right at the moment. And now one awkward yellow is now out in the open after he's played this shot. Thirty seconds. I think he slightly underhit that. He'd like to have drawn back to get that awkward yellow in the center of the table. Or certainly get a little straighter on the yellow over the center. Just didn't cue into it as he would have liked. Pretty good recovery there, though. Still a bit of work to be done, though. Well, you, the way he's looking at it now, if he takes the yellow top left, I think he's going to have to play the yellow into the right-hand center, meaning the black will go left center. That looks like the only option for Greg right now, the awkward yellow. Well, who would have believed that? That was unexpected. That's just careless, Jim. It's very, very careless. But I mean, even so, to go in off at that angle, I mean, he's, you know, you can count yourself a little bit unlucky, but really, you should have had the cue, cue ball nowhere near the pocket. A golden opportunity for Australia, Jim, and they've got to take this, haven't they? Absolutely. Life after death there. A chance now for Ricky Flood to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat. Not a lot of work to do, really. The only thing he's got to do is just develop the red that's near the black. Well, he's got to hold himself together, really. And he's played a terrible shot there. He wanted to just roll the ball in and leave that ball on the middle. The one that's just rolled down onto the cushion. Making it a lot harder for him from this point onwards. Got two visits, remember, so not quite the same amount of pressure on him but he doesn't want to maintain that second visit. But he's still got a ball under the black by the yellow, which has still got to be shaken free to a certain extent. 
He's actually got the ideal angle now, but I'm sure he'll take the one in the middle first and try and get the same angle, be a little bit closer. That don't look too bad at all there. Yeah, that's quite nice. If he can contact the black ball, full in the face, then he should be in perfect position. Well, he's got to shoot the red by the black here. I can't believe oh. this. Wrong shot, Jim. We have all said it. Wrong shot. What the hell is wrong with this man? Still got his two visits. Looking at the double. Maybe just kicking his ball out now. Didn't hit that with a lot of conviction though, did he? Could have struck it with a little more force and left an easier shot on the red by the yellow. See, the shot here really is just to set this ball up. Okay, that's fine, really. Hit a little bit far. A bit too far, the uh, middle pocket, but he should be okay from here. That's not good. Should have been way up top side of the ball. He had the angle to stun up as well. So it's a very thin cut into the middle pocket and bring the cue ball around the two angles. Got to watch the in off. It's got to be very thin. Making mountains out of molehills. Down goes the eight, and the reserve Ricky Flood called into action for Australia produces the goods to pull one back. 9-5 now, Ireland leading. Thank you ladies and gentlemen, 15 frame, Australia to break. So it's Quentin Hahn against John Cullum. Both players have yet to taste defeat in this semi-final. And Quentin Hahn has looked as invincible as one would have expected. Ball off the break. First, or, first order of the day. You can see red bottom right and yellow top right. It's an open table for Quinton. And really, Keith, in play. either suit look favorite. Yeah, it's a very good break again. Like you say, it, either suit uh, would suit him. I suppose most players there would have gone the yellows, to be honest, with them all being bunched down the bottom part of the table. But it doesn't seem to bother this man took the red because it was an easier starting option for him and uh, the way he's been playing in the team event you just don't expect him to miss not the best shot he's ever played there though Chink in the armor of Quentin Hahn. Can John Cullum take advantage? This will be a big step into the final if he can. Nine five. The scoreline reads at this moment in time. Are we going to see an Australian revival, or will John Cullum stop them in their tracks? Thirty seconds. The first team to reach 11 through to the final against England. Come on, well, he's such an intimidating force, Quentin Hahn. I think sometimes you don't play the table, you play the player. And I think that's John Cullum's excuse there. I think you're right, Jim, because I don't think he'd have missed that against anyone else. Just do not. I don't think he's going to get another chance. Can he see enough of this red? Well, this frame's the first time I've really seen him play a couple of bad shots. He missed it more than in the middle before, and I don't think he's on this. And if he is, then he can only just see it. He's played it with a touch of side, tried to come down for this one on the bottom rail. Uh, this is definitely the harder route now. 30 seconds. Fantastic shot, that is. That's a marvellous shot. Back
back in prime position and get on this ball on the cushion after this after this shot. He's back. back in it. Lovely shot. Doesn't want to be straight here though. Well, I think he is a little straight, but to be honest, he can just roll this through, Jim, and he's got the black in the centre, and if he just gets the cue ball near the pocket, to the right-hand side, he should be just around right on it. That's about as best as he could get it from there. And Quentin Hahn has won all three frames he's played. He's pulled Australia back. They've taken the last two, 9-6 now to Ireland. <laughs> Robert Brady for Ireland against Tim Shelton from Australia. And the left-hander Brady to break off. <laughs> they have fallen Great lovely. Fall Look at these reds here. Delighted to see a red drop there. As you said, Neil, look at the position of the Reds. Big opportunity this for Robert Brady. Right balls in play. That's a big surprise. Thirty seconds. the harder path that's right I think he's trying to play this one into the middle this um, right into the middle but he didn't really want to be bridging over the yellow well, he just made hard work of that I think he could have shot the other red made his work much easier you never want to try and second guess these guys it's all a game of feelings and I think he had a planned route of taking the finish out and he didn't want to alter from that and he said that though lads if we just take a look at the yellows Tim really should finish the game and it's a big frame this now for Australia because they should have had a shot and now they have really they've got to take the ball by the horns here and get this frame sewn up here. Thought about it before disappearing. Well at some point the key ball is going to be the one yellow on the right hand cushion. It's just a matter of Tim getting perfect position on that ball. I don't know about you fellows but I just get the feeling that Australia is going to come back at them here. I thought with Quentin Hahn leading off this third session, if they could try and build on that and get an opportunity as they now enjoy, just get a feeling this is this could yet be a real nail biter. Well, if they're going to come back, they've got to do it now. They haven't got many frames to waste. I think he wanted to be a little close to this ball on the on the cushion. Well, he was closer than this just a shot or two ago, and I thought he may have took it then because he just stunned it in. Where now he's got to screw it back seconds. a little bit. 
That's a better shot than what it looked there. I mean, just to pop the ball was a hard enough shot, but I mean, to screw the cue ball back six or seven inches there for this yellow into the centre. So really, the only thing now is to get perfect position on the black ball. And this is just pull the cue ball back again for the eight to the right center. Yeah, I mean, basically, like you say, Jim, just stun it in or maybe just a couple of inches draw back there and he's perfect. Oh, no. A little bit of a twitch there, obviously a rush of adrenaline. I mean, that was... That was grossly overhit, that one. Mark, Mark's out. He's lucky to be quite straight up into the top pocket because if he had, if he was any closer to it, he'd have no no chance of potting this ball. Well, the secret is, Neil, he's actually finished with a shot, hasn't he, where yeah. he shouldn't have. Get in. Get in. Oh, great eight there from Tim Shelton. Left himself a lot to do, no trouble. Three in a row now for Australia. Back to 9-7. Time for the Irish captain to be called into the fray. Tony Holgate against Sean Budd. And Holgate knows this is the biggest frame that he's going to play in this team championship so far. Yeah, it's a massive game for both both teams. That's come very close to that middle come pocket. On, Neil, that, that white ball tried to get in the middle pocket about three times, I think. But somehow it stayed out. Once, twice. Well, it's yellows for me. They certainly placed that little bit better and of course there's a little cluster around the black. The black will pot and all the yellows are just sat there. Didn't want to see that second yellow fall. He wanted it to stay there. That would have increased his options. Also, the other yellow he canned into has gone into a little more awkward position. It still goes, but it's just a bit more awkward. Well, could have been worse, I suppose. Ball stayed right over the pocket. Great shot from Holgate there. Didn't but a lot of problem areas. Didn't want it in though, Jim. Wanted the pocket covered because that would have sewn up the top part of the table. The top yellow only passes into that pocket. And if he could have covered it, it would have just held him up a little bit. The problem is that the three reds down by the black don't pot. So he's not got an obvious finish unless he's going to go for something crazy here. But Sinister have just come back to 9-8. I'm sure he's going to just try and play a strategic game. And also what he might have noted is that when his Australian opponent has been at the table in his previous games, he has gone a little bit reckless for the finishes. So whether that's in the back of his mind or not. Well, Holgate and Sean Budd, the two components here, have yet to slot a frame to their country. So one of them will be winning a big one. <coughs> tried to cover the pocket again, Jim. He's trying to buy a bit of time. That's a couple of times he's tried to cover the pocket. And as you can see, it's going to the side of the pocket, but it's just sliding in off the side. All about pace. Well, he's run out of shots now. Sorry. <coughs> 
well, that's about the best he can do from there. Trying to force him to pot this yellow over the bottom right hand pocket and well he is doing. Well, I just, just can't believe he's done it because he didn't uh, didn't have to do it, Neil, did he? he? You could have just waited a little longer here. No, he's he's forcing himself into the finish, and this is going to be very hard for him. Very hard. You can see Alec; he's a bit worried there, seeing this, seeing Sean go for this finish. No Needed need. to be top side of the yellow as well. He's he's no angle to come back. Come on. I think he's just been too too attack minded. There's times you've just got to sit back and, uh, and and play the way the table lies, and they they know that themselves. You're just trying too hard. All you can say about that is it's massive, massive shot. Bounced on top of the other red. If anything, he's hit, he's hit it too well because he, he'd like to have been on the open yellow first, not the one on the cushion. Whether he'll still play it that way and cannon into the red and the black, and I think that's what he's going to do. You've got to hope he hits the. He's got to hit the red there. Well, he's on with a shot, but it's not the easiest of shots. He almost has to cannon into the black again and leave it to pot luck. That's right, and you've got to watch because this black looks like if he hits it full ball, it could go very close to this middle pocket. Well, he's missed the black, and I don't know if it passes no, does it pass? This is the big question, Jim. It's got to be tight. Come on. It looks like it'll go, Keith. I can think, think, think about three quarters of the pocket, and, and if he can, that will do. If he just rolls it in dead weight, it will slide in off the side of the pocket. Well, he can see half the pocket, Jim. Big shot. It's there! Ooh. Oh, can you believe it? Only Jim. the pace kept it out. As, like I said, he really had to play it a bit slower. Any softer, that was in. Well, that's quite incredible. I cannot believe that the black has stayed up, Jim. A little bit slower, and it would definitely have dropped. But he certainly does have Tony Holgate under the gun now, and this is all Holgate can do. <coughs> Interesting situation now then, Jim. Had no option but to put the red on top of the black. Probably the best shot he could play here would probably be just to roll up dead weight just to the red near the black and pull it try and get it touching. Well, two visits. That's not a bad shot though. No, second option. Means uh, Tony's now got to get rid of two balls. Yeah, but I still think red's a favourite at this moment in time because the the red next to the black, you can actually get it into play, and that's the problem. If he'd have just if he'd have just rested up to it and tried to get it so it's virtually touching, I think it would have been a better shot. But that would have taken a steady nerve, Keith, given where that eight ball is finished. Great shot. And there we go. You see, he's made the double first shot. He can win the game now. Well, I think he can drop this in the centre pocket and he'll be just about perfect to get it out. The only problem is you never know where the red's going to go. No, well, what's happened is fell short. Wow. He's thrown the frame away. Wow. Neil? That's right, that's right. Um, he's got a choice to play the red here as well because he's snookered on the black. He can nominate the red and pot the black. End of frame. Shot, Mac. Second visit. Unbelievable. The turn of events we've been witness to here. Tony Holgate, the Irish captain, just playing Father Christmas there. And would you believe it? Nine frames apiece. It's now a best two out of three. It's all square. That's what we want. Semi-finals. A place to play England, the champions.
Let's get underway again. Man against Abraham. Well, this is without a doubt the most important frame. Now, they've won the last five Australia to pull back nine apiece. Their captain, Alec Evernatis. And he is one of the best players on the Australian team. We mentioned earlier, one of the only players, the only player, in fact, that was part of the World Championship team of 1997. And would you believe it, he hasn't won a frame yet in this semifinal. Is he due? Couldn't be a more important time to start his account. He's ready and willing. But can he do it? Well, I think he'll take yellows here because they do seem to be placed quite well. He's only got the one bad one on the right-hand side cushion. And to be fair, it isn't that bad. Except for a kick. Well, I think he's got a kick there straight away. Terrible contact on that. Yeah, he said it as soon as he played it. The white ball jump a little there. Well, the yellow jumped actually, it looked like. Yes, watch this contact. Anytime you see the balls just clip a little thick. Like the yellow jumped. These are sitting pretty now for John. And McMahon looking to be the man of the match here for Ireland. He has yet <coughs> to lose a frame. Alec Evernatus deep in thought. He'd be looking to land straight on his next shot, which is the red to the right of the black. If you can do so, it makes the finish so much easier. deal on these three res they all part fair enough but I think he needed to be down about another two feet here and be right on these yeah he hasn't finished straight he's gonna have to pop this ball come through the gap between the yellow and the black and then back out again so really it should have been a nice easy finish Neil but in effect he's made it a little bit harder for himself now oh, and and it's all down to the positional shots that he'd played a little bit earlier. And I mean, even there, Neil, if he'd made the red, he's on no shot at all on the next next visit to the table. That's right. All of a sudden, the Irish are missing and not the Aussies. They are suffering at the moment. Yeah, there's been no shouting from the green area for a fair while. I think they're still in shock, to be quite honest. I don't think they can quite believe what's happening. <coughs> but sometimes, you know, you, a break can help, and then you come back out and you're on a roll. And, of course, after the second interval, the, the best thing that could happen for the Australians was their Quinton going out first frame. And he ha hardly ever loses a frame. He wins in a little bit of style, and he G's the team up a little bit. And all of a sudden, it's just been a railroad. <coughs> And if they pinch this one, Jim, well, it's got to be one of the greatest comebacks in a, in a, in a team match. Trailed 9-4 at one stage. They've lost the last five as Ireland now. John McMahon <coughs> has done his part for Ireland. Come on, Ice! Come on, Ice! Go, Ice! Come on! Well, I think there's a couple of nervous shots going on out here, lads. I mean, really, needed to get that over the pocket. Should have played it wide and off the cushion. Get it over the pocket by a bit of time. He's finished on top of the black, but really the shot is if, if Alec can get the yellow over the pocket to the left-hand side in front of the red, I think that's going to be the frame winner. It's not a matter of clearing up here. I think it's just a matter of playing the right shot. 30 seconds. 
from where John um, missed there, if he'd have potted that ball, he'd still have, he would have still had a finish there. By cannon in the yellow under the under the red. Well, I don't agree with this at, at all. You're taking his advantages away there, Al. I know it's not a hard finish. I'm not saying it is a hard finish. All I'm saying is it's nine all. It's a massive frame, and I think if he'd have just put this yellow over the bottom left-hand pocket, I think it would secure the frame. Well, he's done that now. Well, these are very tense moments. And a man noted for being solid under pressure is Alec Evernatis. The Irish eyes are not smiling at the moment. Thirty seconds. No, I'm touching. Well, I don't think that's a very good shot because I think that uh, Alec can cover the other pocket, which he's doing. He's playing the right shots now. And really, it's just a stranglehold that he has on this frame at the moment. That's right. John's, um, John's out of control in this one. And Alex is taking control and <coughs> the frame one at the moment. Still shots to be played. The only thing of note really is that although he's got the yellows over the two bottom pockets, there are gaps to each side of the yellows. Mm -hmm. And then of course John has the two reds, so theoretically he can still actually win the game. Not at maybe at this visit, but if he can just play the right shots and hold in there, there's no reason he might not get a little, tr a little sniff just later on. Nice. However, <laughs> Neil, as I've said that, that's right, John's made a, a big boo-boo. Tried to play the red dead weight and get it into the gap. That's what he's tried to do here. But unfortunately, as you can see now, he's put the yellow right over the pocket. And now these John's going to have to work very hard to get a winning position here. <coughs> well... I'd have thought he would have played that underneath the red. Well, I'm sure that's what he was trying to do, Neil. I think it was just a very poor shot. I mean, he didn't even have to do that, really. He could have just brought the yellow into the top half of the table, really, and just sat back. Mind you, having said that, watch where this yellow finishes. He can almost play the yellow under the red to pot the yellow, and that red is going to clear the pocket. That is true, that's Jim, right. yeah. That's right. The but surely on. John's going to play a good tactical shot here to stop that happening. He's got a chance to get this red in front of the yellow. Nearly. I think this is a chance, you know. Chance right now for Alec. If he decides to take the bull by the horns, he can attack from here. And his eyes almost see that. Well, I think he'll try and just rest this yellow in front of the red. He's going to have to be positive now. I think he sees what we were talking about, Keith. Well, it's a, it's a big finish, to be honest, at this stage of the game, because, I mean, once he plays this shot, he's leaving all the reds potable. If this doesn't come out right, he's virtually lost. Well, a couple of things, Jim, there is... One that does the yellow pot into the pocket, it's very tight, and and if it does, the cue ball is very close to the yellow to get back up for the last yellow. And I think he's got to use the rest as well, right. Keith. So I think he's struggling here either way. I think really, in playing that shot as he did, he needed to screw the white back at least, what, 10 to 12 inches. Well, this is, this is dodgy. If for no other reason, the distance between the eye and the white. Not quite though.
O'Neill. He's played a great shot, fair dues, but he needed to come back another foot or so here because we can just roll this into the middle. That's right, probably as good as he could have hit from there, though, I would say. Well, uh, I think he's looking awkward. to cut this extra thin off maybe the knuckle and cannon the black. And he's done it. Great shot from Alec there. This is going to be a great finish. Aussies. And a nail in the Irish coffin. This will put the Aussies in control. And down it goes. And Alec Evernatis clearing up the last four yellows. A great performance now in front of the Irish side. The biggest team event of the year, the Embassy 8-Ball World Team Pool Championships. And Patty Dorn from Ireland looking to keep their hopes alive. All of a sudden, what looked to be a runaway, they find themselves on the brink of defeat. And who comes forth from the Australian side but the reserve, Ricky Flood. That's right, Ricky's the one who started all this off as well. What a moment for him. Very, very highly touted, is he? Alec Evernatis, the Australian captain, speaks volumes of Ricky Flood's game. Played a nice shot there. I was going to say, he's got a great opportunity here, Neil, because the Reds do look very nice. That's right, he's got one red by the yellow which he's got to sort out at some point. He may yeah. do it this shot. That's going to be his, his main problem there. But he has a great opportunity now to bring it into play. Well, that was the awkward red. The one he's finished nearest to. That was always going to be the problem ball. It still is. would like to have just nudged it a little further into the open there. <laughs> this almost looks like he's got a nice angle. That red is available top right. I think he's got to try and get rid of it right here, Keith. That's right, Jim, and um, he's in prime position, to be quite honest, because he can roll this through now, maybe six to eight inches, leave the angle on that red to screw down for the last two reds, and then that will be the key shot. <coughs> well, I can't see just how straight he is on this red. Will he needed to leave a little chance. angle, ideally. Well, you might be able to screw back off the yellow, Keith. Tough to tell from that angle. Well, I think he's got to give it a go. He needed to make sure, really, he ran through there a little bit extra. But, yes, I think he can screw back. Played it well. Oh, no, he hasn't. This is destined for a one-frame decider. <coughs> Look at where that cue ball's finished. Well, it's a big, big opportunity they've had here. The yellows are still in quite awkward positions at the moment. Show me Travis Crawley, the one with the towel. Thirty seconds. Come on, Come on. And there's Travis Crawley. If it does go to a decider, the gentleman with the towel in front of his face, he will be the one carrying the Australian flag. Foul committed, two visits. And Patty Dorn will be coming to the table. 
now Don in the role of favorite. Time running. The pressure is immense. Yeah, Paddy's got a few difficult balls here, but it's a lot about pressure management here. Got to keep himself together. He's very close to that ball. Like so I said, pressure management. Still got a shot left. He certainly didn't want to waste it this early, though. Well, I think the secret here is he doesn't really have to go for the finish. He can just rest out there if he wants to. He doesn't have to do anything silly. The two reds are down the other side of the table. I can't see the point in the shot he just played. No, I must admit, Neil, I was just trying to work that one out myself. Whether he was playing it off the top angle of the pocket and he was hoping it was just going to sit in the jaws, because as you can see, he was snooking on both of the reds. <coughs> That's about all I can think of. That's right, he's probably going to have to bump one of the balls off the cushion and try and get a snooker behind that. 30 seconds. Come on, Rick. Come on, Rick. Come on, Rick. That's right, didn't quite get the bump right. Very nervous sequence of shots there from Paddy Dorn. Understandably. Well, to be fair, Jim, it was it was a reasonably decent finish with one visit, but with two, really should have made it. But as Neil said, the pressure is building. It's like a cold run out there now. Great, that's a great shot. Could have finished a little bit easier with a cue ball. But what a big shot this is now. I mean, even if this sits in the jaws of the pocket, he's favourite. Well, this is what pool is all about. Ben Bolton. It's not in, but it's over the pocket. Second prize, Jim, as I said. It was a tough shot. It was under the rail, kind of half bridging over the yellow as well. But now all he can do is sit there and hope he gets another opportunity. Yeah, but it is a possible finish there, but the pressure Paddy's shown up to now. It's going to be a hard work, big job. Well, to be honest, his, his biggest problem is just the, the ball that's on the side rail, on the left-hand side. If he can get that down the rail, then he's a, he's a chance to finish. It may just drop into the middle, though, Keith. Uh, maybe it's just drop it in the middle, and then he's got to block into the other middle. Well, I think his problem, certainly from what he's displayed so far, is the yellow nearest the red. He's got to have an angle to get on that where it's available to the left-hand side of the table. Now, when is he going to do that? I don't think he's quite got the angle... Up the rail now has got to be the shot, I would think. That's Close right. to win off this, Neil, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah, he wants to be a lot straighter on this one. If he rolls it in, Jimmy, he's going to be very close to the centre pocket. But he's got to roll it in dead weight if he's going to take the last one up the rail. Well, this is as tense as it comes. I don't think they fancy it. I don't seconds. think the gentleman with a cue in his hand likes it that much either. Oh, baby. And there you go. Yeah, baby. Well, in the end, yeah, yeah, 30 on. seconds on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's had a lash, he didn't know what to do. I think it was in off and he's had a lash. Well, what an opportunity this is for the Australians then to win the match. Rollins. That's what you want. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this has got to be one of the greatest comebacks I've ever seen in a team game. 9-4 be 
behind. They took the last seven on the spin to run out 11-9 winners. An unbelievable performance by the Australian team, and they're through to contest the Embassy team final against England. Well, it has to be said, at the top of this match, we didn't think that Ireland were going to win, but certainly not the way it planned out. And uh, Mikey Alexandro, you said you thought Australia were going to win, but uh, boy, at one thought, then we thought uh, Ireland were running away with it. Yeah, well, when Ireland went up 9-4, we thought that was it, and Australia just kept in the race, and Tony Holgate should have won it for them. But Australia kept the faith and fought on and came out tops. Final, uh, who's going to win it, England or Australia? I think Australia being a little bit lucky in the semi-final, uh, they might go through to be playing in the final with a little bit more confidence and uh, knowing that a little bit of luck is running their side and you never know, might be closer than we think. Alright, well in many other sports we've had classics between England and Australia and I'm sure it's going to be the same in eight ball pool. That's going to be the final of the team's competition. My thanks to everyone, until next time, from all of us here at Blackpool, 